Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about Paragonimus, that is the continuation of Parasitology series, especially the Traumatode series. We have talked about Traumatodes in detail, find this link in the description or in the top right corner. Before starting the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes, things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get started. Paragonimus. Its full name is Paragonimus westimani. It is also called as lung fluke because it causes infection in the lungs, sometimes in lung parenchyma or sometimes in bronchioles. And the infection caused by the Paragonimus westimani is called as Paragonimysis. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the Paragonimus, now we'll talk about its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and then the prevention. Stages in the life cycle of Paragonimus. It has following three stages. First one is egg, then comes the larva. Larva is further classified into different stages on the basis of its morphology and on the basis of the sites it infects and it goes from and to. The third stage in the life cycle of any trematode is adult fluke. Let's talk about their morphology. morphology. First we'll start with egg, then we'll go towards the larvae and the adult fluke. The shape of the egg is ovoid or it is elongated. It has a thick shell that is often asymmetrical with one end slightly flattened. As you can see there, this end is slightly flattened and it has two ends. One end is the large end and there is the operculum which is clearly visible and the other end, the opposite end, the abopercular end is thick. you can see this is the large end and there is the operculum which is visible and this is the abopercular and the opposite end of the end which has the operculum and is thickened. The size of egg is 80 to 120 micrometers long by 45 to 70 micrometers wide. It is yellow to brown in color and the eggs are unembryonated when passed in sputum, feces or urine. Lava. There are certain stages in the life cycle of First lava. We'll talk about the myrosidia. It hatches from the egg when the egg reaches uh, the fresh water. After entering the uh, first intermediate host, we'll talk about the host a bit later. It, the myrosidia, differentiates into the radii and then this radii differentiates into the free swimming cercaria these swimming, free swimming cercaria reach the fresh water from the uh, body of the first intermediate host and then swim towards the second intermediate host and there they are converted into metacercaria and when this second intermediate host is eaten by the human beings is responsible for causing the infection Cercaria are often indistinguishable between the species. They have a large posterior sucker and their exterior is spined. The metacercaria usually insist in the tissue, uh, the tissues of the small intestine because the metacercaria when eaten by any human reaches the GI tract. When it reaches the small intestine, it starts to access and then from the small intestine, it reaches uh, towards the lung. How it reaches there, we'll talk about this in the life cycle and pathophysiology of the paragonimus. The exterior of metacercaria is spined and it has two suckers. Adult fluke. It is ovoid in shape. We will uh, see its picture in a moment. It's 7 to 16 millimeters long by 4 to 8 millimeters wide. It is reddish brown in color. It is similar in size and appearance to a coffee bean like that. It is hermaphroditic organism. What is a hermaphrodite? Hermaphrodite is any organism that has both the male and the female genders in the same body. It means that the adult fluke of Paragonimus has both the male and female reproductive organs in the same body. It has lobed ovary located anterior to the two branching testes. We'll visualize that a in a moment, it has an oral and a ventral sucker. Let's see. On the right side, you can see that it is reddish brown in color. 
this OS, this one, it represents the oral sucker. It also has a ventral sucker. On the ventral side, you can see this excretory bladder. And on anterior side, you can see this CE pointing towards the cecum. Both the cecum and excretory bladder are the excretory organs of this organism. This OV refers to the ovary and this TE refers to the testes, the branch testes. As we talked a bit earlier, that ovaries are present anterior to the branched testes. So here you can visualize that on the anterior side are the ovaries and uh, near to the ventral side are the branched testes. This UT near the ovaries represents the uterus and this AC, it is the acetabulum, habitate. The definitive hosts are human beings, causing the human beings after an excitation in the small intestine, this organism is responsible for causing infection. Intermediate hosts. It has two intermediate hosts. The first one is freshwater snails, as I've talked earlier, the first intermediate host. And then the second intermediate host is freshwater crab. Transmission. Transmission occurs via fecal oral by route. eating raw or undercooked crab meat or crayfish. Life cycle. Life cycle of Paragonmus has three stages. First one is the human cycle, then the snail cycle because it is the first intermediate host, then comes the crab cycle as it's the second intermediate host. Let's start with the human cycle. Humans are infected by eating raw or undercooked crab meat or crayfish containing the ancestored larvae termed as metasecaria. After excitation in the small intestine, the immature flukes, the lung flukes, the paragonimus westermani, penetrate the intestine and migrate through the diaphragm into the lung parenchyma. There, they differentiate into hermaphroditic adults. As I mentioned earlier, hermaphroditic adult means both the male and female reproductive organs will be present in the same body. And then these adults produce eggs that enter the bronchioles and are cuffed up or swallowed. Eggs in the sputum or feces or urine that reach the fresh water hatch into marasidia. What did I just say? That upon reaching the fresh water, eggs will hatch into marasidia, which will enter the snails, the first intermediate hosts. There, they differentiate first into lava, the radii, and then into many free-swimming circariae. This is the snail cycle. The circariae then infect and insist in freshwater crabs, the second intermediate hosts. This is termed as crab cycle. The cycle is completed when the undercooked infected crabs are eaten by the humans. Diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of Paragonimus. It starts here when the human cuffs up or, or releases the unembryonated stool or sputum. Then these unembryonated eggs has the embryo in them, the myrosidium that hatches and it penetrates the snail, the first intermediate hosts. Here you can see the uh, blue waves representing the fresh water. Then this myrosidia gets converted into radii and circaria inside the body of the snail. And then uh, when it is converted into free-living circaria, these free-living circaria enter the body of uh, the crab, the freshwater crab, which are then called, termed as infected crabs. When these infected crabs are eaten, uh, if they were undercooked by human beings, then these exist in the duodenum, the second part of the small intestine. And then here, as you can see, this uh, uh, dark pink or if you call it purple this is the diaphragm and this red arrow represent that represents that it enters from the duodenum through this diaphragm to the lung parenchyma and then it will uh, go to the bronchioles and will cause the infection and there. then again the human will cuff up the productive cuff and uh, the productive cuff has some um, sputum in it and this sputum will contain those eggs and the feces and stool definitely have those eggs if it will be swallowed in by the human Pathogenesis. Within the lung, the worms exist in a fibrous capsule that communicates with a bronchiole. Secondary 
bacterial infection frequently occurs, resulting in bloody sputum. Epidemiology. Paragonomyces is endemic in Asia and India. In the United States, it occurs in immigrants from these areas. There are more than 10 species reported to infect humans. Most common is Paragonimus westermani, the oriental lung fluke. Clinical findings. The main symptom is a chronic cough with bloody sputum. If the cough will be productive, it will definitely be having some sort of sputum in it. Dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, recurrent attacks of bacterial pneumonia. As in pathogenesis, I mentioned that secondary bacterial infection frequently occurs. This is the secondary bacterial infection that is pneumonia. This disease will resemble tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, um, shortly we call it TB. It is caused by a bacterium called a mycobacterium tuberculosis. And the symptoms of tuberculosis are similar to the symptoms of paragonomyces. That's why we say that paragonomyces can resemble tuberculosis. Um, tuberculosis has certain symptoms like fever, malaise, tiredness, etc. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples like sputum, feces, urine and effusion biopsy material. Diagnosis is made by finding typical apoculate eggs in sputum or feces under the microscope. Serologic tests are not useful. Treatment. Praziquantel is the drug of choice. Prevention. Prevention involves adequate cooking of the crab or crayfish and proper disposal of human wastes. Let's review everything really quick. The organism is paragonimus. Its mode of transmission is via fecal oral route or by ingesting raw or undercooked crab or crayfish. It has two intermediate hosts. The first one is snail, freshwater snail, and the second one is freshwater crab. It has one definitive host and that is human being. Main sites affected in human body are lungs. That's why it is called as lung fluke. Its diagnosis is made by finding the typical apoculated eggs in the sputum or feces. And the treatment of choice for this disease is praziquantel. It has no insect vector and the stages that infect human are the larvae in undercooked or raw crab and the stage in humans most associated with the disease is adult flukes that live in the lungs and the important stage outside the humans are um, eggs ingested by the snails. Uh, actually eggs are not ingested by the snails but the myrosidium get uh, but the myrosidium gets in the body of the snail and the cercaria that in fact the crab, the free living, the free swimming cercaria if you remember from the pathogenesis. And that's it for today's video. I hope it made sense. I hope you've learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics of uh, resources of different medical subjects for example take this one where i have uploaded amazing resources for pharmacology which textbooks you can use uh, some online resources like youtube channels websites applications etc i've also got my twitter and i rarely upload blogs so do check them out till next time assalamu alaikum